Welcome to Threads of Enlightenment. And as usual, once our guests present, it is always my honor and pleasure to accept. And I, with a humble heart, I want to thank both for coming to our studio to walk with us for a few minutes talking about his journey so that you and I can participate. We could gain wisdom together. We can get some insight so that we can become better human spirits while we're here on this planet. Bo, I want to thank you so much for coming to Threads of Enlightenment, sir. Ken, thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing your platform so I can share so share my message and the, the Amuni message. It's really, uh, it's really a privilege. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I want you to tell them, Bo, because my people know I tell them all the time, I preach it day in, day out. You and I are creators, mm. and the life that they are living today, they create it. And the reason why they are listening to you and I is because they want to change where they are at. I want you to tell them what you have created, because I tell them the beautiful thing about creators is once they are awakened, you cannot stop them. One of the things that they cannot stand is stagnant. When we are stagnant, uh, we keep moving. We love to move. We love to create because that energy is awakened. Talk to them. Well, what have you created? Tell them about your books. Tell them about everything. All right. man. It's funny, like, you know, creators, like, you know, we're all creators, whether, you know, we're doing, uh, what, what you and I would, uh, or most people would say is good or, you know, whether what most people would say would be bad, right? Um, I spent the majority mm -hmm. of my life, mostly until my late thirties, you know, creating bad. And it was done so, it was done so because of the programming that I had installed, uh, as a child carried over from, you know, my family, from my family lineage as well. And through yeah. all the drugs and alcohol and, uh, bankrupting myself financially and romantically and, you know, pushed my family away as well. So after all of that, uh, with all those broken pieces, you know, once you, once you find yourself with all those broken pieces, then, that gives you the impetus to heal. And that's what I did. When I reached a point of almost no return, I started looking to figure out how I could put the pieces back together. And that's when well, I, it was a long, long healing journey. It took me probably about eight years before I had put all the pieces together and reached a point where I am now, maybe six years until I came to Amun. Um, Amun in Spanish means I love, Ni in Chinese means uh, you. So Amun Ni means mm -hmm. blended, I love you. And the system is nice. a blended system which uses uh, muscle testing, a meridian release points, a pranayamic breath uh, called the Amun breath, and uh, it's a neuro-linguistic program, creative realization. I think uh, each of our sessions to grease the wheels of intention and send you firmly down the path consciously. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's uh, what I use. That's that's what I use to say, that's harmony. That's awesome, man. I, I love, I, I tell them, the creator only shines but when we when there's darkness in our life. Until then, there's no need for, for the creator um, in the sense to get us out of our situation or create yeah. a new world. We are all creating constantly. And most people, because of our programming by society and parents and, as you said, ancestral things that we are, uh, that have been constantly deposited into us. Uh, if you don't think I'm programming, uh, that we are being programmed, uh, then you don't know the advertisement business that uh, still spends billions of dollars. Uh, programming. I'll tell you how I know that they're programming as well. Take uh, those who have little girls uh, or, or kids or drive by McDonald's without stopping and then you'll know about exactly. programming. But here you are uh, that uh, you have brought up. You mentioned a little about this, about your family life. I want to go back. Uh, talk to us about your family. Uh, we know that this, um, uh, for lack of a better word, we call it family, but I call it the lab. You and I are in this lab with these two scientists yeah. that are actually experimenting because they don't even have the formula They're mad either. scientists, right? But they are trying <laughs> to, yeah, they're trying to put this thing together, but they're doing it from a space of love. They don't know, a lot of them don't know any yeah. better um, because of the trauma that they suffered. And so, but they're teaching us. So talk to me about that family life, man. What was it like? 
Oh, my my mother and father uh, never really loved each other, uh, and so. Mm-hmm. But I, I grew up in I grew up in that environment, and I just thought that was normal. And so when I was about yeah. twelve years old, they came to my brother and I, and they said that they were divorced, and that just you know to me that uh, non love in the environment was just normal, and it's just losing that. I felt like, oh, I can't, I can't believe it. I felt like the rug had just been pulled out from me. So I, I ran out the door, ran out the door, yeah. down the street, and I hid for most of the afternoon and the evening until I got hungry, and then I went back up for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's interesting, though, how we, um, again, you speak to an incident that took place, and that incident causes a form of trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, and so here's this young boy that, to your recollection, re, uh, you're now remembering one of your first major trauma. How did it make you feel, and how did you begin to perceive the world from that experience? I ran. That was that was my that initial reaction of me running. That was my program, and that stayed my program mm-hmm. until I I would run. I ran from everything. Yeah. Uh, if I felt threatened, I would run. Yeah. Uh, if I didn't like things, I would run. If I wasn't happy, I'd run. I ran from wonderful women. I ran from good jobs. I ran from success. I ran from uh, health. I ran from everything. Uh, anything that I thought was, wow. yeah, I just bankrupted myself just on every level imagined. And I felt like, you know, and from that from that point on, I just punished myself just relentlessly. That's when I started, not long after that, when I started drugs. Just, just painful, man. It's really painful. But, you know, like you said, you know, with that darkness, I would shine. Did it um, cause you to feel as if it was your fault to a degree? Or how did you, what was your perception of that incident? Um, I know it uh, it made you run, but what was the deeper, more emotional uh, um, implant? From that trauma that took place, the, the deep the manifestation was that you ran. But mm. what was the deepness of that uh, emotional um, trauma that took place that caused you to run? To run, do you think? Uh, you know, I never really. I don't think I ever really blamed my parents. Um, I didn't. I don't think I blamed myself or my brother. I did. There was some, definitely some big emotional baggage that came that I embodied and anchored into that situation and carried carried forward and yeah that you know, was definitely a huge impact on me. But there were you know, there were a lot of other big things that happened uh, earlier in my life the instances that you know, the thing is like when we talk about you mentioned trauma earlier, right? And it's like, you know, most people think of like a traumatic of experiences like what I just said, like, you know, your parents just, you know, dropping the bomb and divorce you or like a car accident or just yeah, getting yeah. raped or, you know, seeing somebody get shot. But like a traumatic incident can be like a dog barking at you and, or uh, you being at the grocery yeah. store and wanting a candy bar and your mom saying, no, you can't have it. And then you like pitch a fit. Like traumatic trauma is like, it's, it's in, it's, it, we, we determine what trauma is. Uh, and, and it can be yeah. something so, it could be a look. Can be, yeah, oh, exactly. It could be a look. From a parent, from someone of exactly. authority, can give you this or look. their energy, right? You picking up off their energy, right? Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's um, trauma is comes in many different. Oh, forms. for sure, for sure. Um, uh, so yeah, you know, I I I used to traumatize my kids. I, had, I was a single dad with, with 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 boys, and I used to traumatize them looking at them. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, bro. <laughs> you know, but. Um, until I had to learn how, how to, when I went through my journey, then that, that aspect of my behavior changed. But yeah, we, we, we all do this mm-hmm. stuff, man. And, and like I said, it, it, it's, it could be, as you said, it's not just the major stuff no way. that someone talks about. It's the small things, the look, the ignoring of, um, those type yeah. things. It's, I can, you like your action and inaction, right? So even yes. not doing anything yes. can cause you trauma. So it's just, yeah, I guess that's why we are called to li- to to walk in love, man, in this in this energy of loving people. Because um, if you walk like that, though, I don't think you will traumatize um, people that much. But as you let's talk about your journey, because as you as you gain insights, and I said, people, as you gain insight and you become more aware of who you are, and when you go on your your personal journey, you go to fall in love with yourself, respect yourself, 
that's where all of those things come oh, yeah. from. Uh, it comes out of that relationship. Talk to me as you are moving through this. You are now in in. Let's go to high school. How was high school, and how did you manage? That? I hated high school, man. I really did. Um, and so <laughs> when I was fifteen, I got in. Uh, I was a, I was a decent soccer player, and I got mm-hmm. my knee taken out. I busted my ACL, my MCL, cartilage, and like I never played soccer. Wow. And that after that, like that's when I hit. Wow. I had, that's when I hit the boost, and I started getting in trouble. Um, I ended up. Making it through high school, I got into a decent uh, university, East Carolina University. And, mm-hmm. and after my first year, I just, when I got to school, I just went crazy. And a week after yeah. the first the spring semester, so the, after the first year, I got in a car accident. I was, my dad gave me a car. Ten days later, I completely totaled it. I was going 100 miles an hour. I was completely drunk. I flipped off the road several times. The cops saw the whole thing. It was at like 12 o'clock at night. Went through a telephone pole, broke the wow. telephone pole in half. The cops showed up on the scene and told the ambulance driver, he's like, you guys take your time. No rush. Um, but when they got on scene, they figured wow. they, they heard me moaning and figured out that uh, I was alive and they airlifted me to the hospital. Yeah. Um, I had a near death experience. My dead grandfather showed up and told me that it wasn't my time to go back. Uh, and I honestly regretted that scissor decision about the next 20 years of my life. Uh, with alcohol with me was always, it was a way to quiet the voices in my head. And for me, I honestly yeah. wanted to, Jim Morrison of the doors was a big idol of mine. I imagine myself drinking myself stupid and not waking up. And- yeah. So yeah, that's, um, and, um, a lot of us, we, other people do other things and, uh, uh, quiet that voice, as you said, asking the questions and making you look inwards as you begin to look introspective with your behavior. Those are just manifestations of the stuff that is lurking inside. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's a scary place to go visit. Yeah. And uh, usually we try to numb those um, those voices. I always tell people, well, to partiers, the wildest one is the one that... Uh, is going to be pulled out of that situation because he or she is going to be able to go back and be a really good teacher because they could when they can talk to that situation when they're looking at that person uh, that was in the same space that they are um, that they were several years ago. The truth that we speak to that um, is absolutely powerful, and they the, the hearer of our story knows it because it's not fluff. They know that. Is coming from some place that have been there before. So talk to me. You got through this accident. I know some medical stuff. You got to go through rehab, all of those things to get healed mentally. When you were in the bed, Bo, by yourself, the lights are off and you got, you, can, you don't have access to any alcohol. You don't have access to nothing. Talk to me as to how that stuff was going on. And how did you manage uh, those voices that were trying to talk? To you? Um, man, I, well, I, I got through it. I had my family that, you know, I got through everything. Uh, about a year and a half to rehab. And then about six months after I was, I'd gotten straight again. I got, uh, I was, I went, I ended up back in school. I was at a, another party. Uh, I just gotten off work. I did a cake stand at mm-hmm. uh, a friend's house. Got on my skateboard, shot down the street, and got hit by a car. Um, yeah. Wow. Took out my right leg. almost lost my right leg. I got a staph infection um, that had me on a, like, a pick line. I don't know if you know what that is. But just like a direct, mm-hmm. a direct yep. right into your yeah. heart because the, the antibiotics are so strong. Yeah. So I had one of those. And then uh, mm-hmm. my left left ankle was crushed. Uh, broke elbow and like a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, so I just right back into the man. <sighs> so then uh, the healing process for so that talk was another to me. year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, man, you're, I'm, I'm talking to a walking miracle. So talk to me, um, uh, when you, when, when the light came through, um, uh, but when the light came through, when you start looking at yourself and that first light walked through into your thoughts that landed within your your uh, your decision making uh, area that said to you this needs to change. Talk to me about that. Well, that didn't happen until oh, about fifteen years later. 
So I left the I left the states. I pushed my family away because after that I got graduated school. I got into cocaine, and then after all the alcohol problems, I could not tell my family that I was addicted to cocaine. So I just left the country, packed up and left, and I traveled the world. I ended up teaching English and bounced around from country to country, and it just was yeah, it was a mess. And I had a I had a really big breakdown. In around 35 or 36, I was in Vietnam and I, I had just lost everything. I lost a good job. I lost a great woman. And so I called my brother. I was like, man, I need help. And so we, yeah, I went home. And then to get back on my feet, I was like, ah, I love traveling. I'll start a blog and I'll just write my way across the United States on a bicycle. And like write about my experiences. And that worked, but I mean, I made it to the other side of the country, but the blog or website never took off. So I found myself back, I found myself with my aunt and uncle at that time. And my aunt got breast cancer. And about the same time, like my body was breaking down from all the drinking. And that's when the, that's when I had that light go off. Nice. And uh, once that light came in and um, you began to have that conversation, uh, this is, I tell people, a privilege to be there because it's probably the first time in your life you start being really honest. And that, to me, is where the love starts, is uh, the expression of love is that you begin to be honest. And uh, when you're drinking and partying and all that type stuff, those are the masks that you wear to, to keep that this honest conversation from happening. Um, when you begin to, to talk to yourself and have this, this dance about um, how did it make you feel and um, what steps did you take to start moving through that time period in your life? Well, it's, you know, it's funny that you just, uh, mentioned the love because that was one of one of the first mode of, like the first books. I think that was the first book that I read. It was something I can't remember the title of it now, but it was something about love yourself. Yeah. And it was basically about this guy who was like uh, he was in Silicon Valley, he just had a successful company, but it was just like always depressed. And he basically talked himself into loving himself by looking in the mirror and saying, you know, I love you, I love you. And I just tried that. And I, it made me feel better, but at the same time, I was looking at myself in a mirror and I was just, I was just look. One side of me was saying, I love you, but then there was a huge part of me was saying, you're such a like, yeah. idiot. Like, look at how, why would you love this person? It's like, this person is trash they look at where yeah. they are I and mean, i can at that point i was comparing myself to where my friends were and you know, yeah it was it's hard so but i just like you know i was determined you know i haven't seen my aunt go through her chemo and everything like that. i was like this is you know, she can do it like you know she's fighting for her life like uh, you can't even get your you know at least you know step up and play and get your stuff in yeah. order right so that that really helped yeah, and having them there for me to use their support morally, more, their moral support was huge. And I spent, uh, yeah, I got into meditation. I started doing Tony Robbins, Joe Dispenza, like Mind Valley. I was taking courses left and right, burning through books, and things were like things would resonate, and things would, you know, the whole, you know, the whole, you know, vibe of the self help uh, industry, you know, like you get better, get better, you know, and that you kind of get hooked on yeah. that. Something would pull me a little bit, and then I was like, ah, this is not working. So I looked for mm -hmm. something else. And then, you know, once you're on that journey, then it's almost like yeah. you're hooked. You're hooked on the self help <laughs> yeah. vibe, right? Just like, oh, you know, that's not working. You know, what else can work? Else, you know, looking, looking, and looking, just all over the place, you know, turning over every stone I could find, and like nothing was seeming uh -huh. to work. <laughs> I was trying meditation, and like I was keeping my mind quiet for a while you know when i was sitting down meditating but then as soon as i'd get up and like go through my daily life i was cursing and like uh, <laughs> uh that, that's, that's <laughs> normal though. i think with some people it takes them a while and um i always tell people because uh meditation some people are afraid of it it depends i i tell them there's thousands of ways to meditate most people uh, when they think of meditation, they think of the classical way you sit on a bow or a leg and all that type of stuff. Not many people can do that. You know, um, you can meditate. I, as I mentioned, I've told before the story where I was um, talking about meditation to a woman and she said, I meditate when she cleans the house. And um, but whatever that place is, it's that. Um, and I always say the, the meditation, the part that makes the difference. Well, 
is when you learn to incorporate the breath. And I think the breath is the movement from oh, yeah. the uh, chaotic world into the spiritual world. And when you start to learn that aspect of meditation, whatever and however you achieve it, but you need to get to that place with the transition, that bridge by the exhaling and the breathing out and letting, uh, letting go of all the less than thinking and, and belief system that when you stood in front of that mirror and you had that conversation back and forth, one side is saying, yeah, bro, you were it. And the other side saying, oh, hell no. You know, that conversation when you're, that's the, that's the dance that I was talking about that we all have to go through. How did you, um, from that conversation in the mirror, um, Bo, how did you, uh, did the one that, uh, how did you quiet that voice that says you, you are less than? How did you learn to quiet him? And what was the tools that you utilized to make that happen? Because a lot of people are there. I honestly, like, I'd never quieted that voice until I discovered the muscle test and together the armor program that I, that I work now. Um, when I first got there, it was just my, I'm a stubborn son mm-hmm. of a bitch. So like when something, when I decide to do something, like I'm going to, I'm going to do it. So like when I was drinking, I was like, I'm, I'm a drink. I don't care. I'm going to be the best drinker there is. Like I'll just, I'll be the best party there is. And I just, that's what I did. Yeah. So when I decided to stop, I was like, all right, this is the way I'm going. And like, and so I, my stubbornness just pulled me through a lot of places that otherwise I wouldn't have made it. Yeah. So I got through with that. Just with that, that voice constantly telling me, you know, what an idiot I was and what a loser I was and like, and why I about, I was always, you know, I was always putting together past, uh, my past record. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, you know, in the stock market, they say past performance is no perform, no guarantee of future re- yeah. results. But I was saying, um, I was telling myself, you know, the, your past performance is <laughs> guaranteeing what you're going to do. Like, look, look at what you've mm. done. Like that, that's what you've done so far. And like, that's what you're going to keep doing. And it was just, it was impossible for me to get out of that. Um, until I discovered muscle testing and, you know, on my website, I, I mean, I, st- I do meditate, uh, do it not every day, but probably four times a week after, after some exercises that I do. Yeah. But one thing, like on my website, I say, I've got this like hashtag meditation takes too long with the muscle testing and the, and the, the Omni system that I've developed, it's like search and destroy. Mm-hmm. So like I was, when I first learned how to like self muscle test and, and find the emotions that I had buried, it was like a light went off and it took me a while to, to get the muscle test. Yeah. Uh, it took me almost a month before my body was, was uh, talking to me. And you know, when I muscle test, I use uh, one hand to use the thumb and, uh, Thumb and index finger of my left hand, and then I use pinky finger and thumb of the right hand form to a mm-hmm. chain. And then yes, that chain stays strong. No, and the chain breaks. Well, it takes you a while to to get to learn what that yes and no is for your body to actually start talking to you and say, you know, the way that I started doing it when I first started testing was like, my name is Bo. That tree is. Cool. Uh, I'm wearing jeans. Uh, I like cheeseburger. It just I would test everything. I would walk around the house or I'd be working or whatever I was doing. I was always walking around and testing, testing, testing everything. And it took, like I said, about three to four weeks. But once, once it clicked, I was like, whoa, yeah, that's, that's my yes. That's my yes. And that's my no. Then once I was able to use that and start figuring out what the emotions were and where, where they were Mm -hmm. hidden, man, it was like, oh, party on. Cause I was, uh, you know, uncovering that. The biggest part of like the muscle testing is like trust. Yeah. Once you establish that trust with your, with your body, then the communication. Open. And once the communication is open, you have the keys to the castle and you can change virtually anything that you want. That is awesome, man. That is, um, how did you, how did you come about, um, learning about the muscle testing? What, what took place? Uh, what incident was it? Or se- usually it's a series of, but what was that catalyst that brought you to it and go, um, let me try this? I went through, I had been exposed to muscle testing before. Um, there's a, there's a doctor, there's a chiropractor in the Midwest, Dr. Sue. I can't remember her name. She does the, she wrote a book called. Uh, I, I know about the muscle testing from a yeah, chiropractor she, in New York. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Um, this one, this woman, she wrote a book. Her name, uh, the book's called The Energy mm-hmm. Codes. Have you heard of no, that? No, no, no. I have to take a look at it. Okay, like she's she's on that same circuit with like Doctor Joe. She's like yeah. really famous. And um, anyway, so I read that book, and uh, my girlfriend at the time, who's what, who's now my wife, but we we were doing that together. It's basically the, the two person muscle testing, where one person uh, stands uh, with the one arm extended, and then the other person standing behind him is like pushes yep. on the arm. So if the arm stays extended, then that's a yes. If the, if the arm drops, then that's a no. And I don't know, that just didn't really resonate with because I'm, I'm somebody that likes to, I like to do things yeah. on my own. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, I want to, you know, if I'm going, if I'm going in, like I want to go in myself, yeah. you know, I don't want to have, you know, somebody else going in mm-hmm. on me. Um, yeah. if that makes yeah. sense. So, um, I discovered, uh, so my, my wife and I had, we, we had a huge argument mm. and, both of us were, we were both going through our own healing journey and we were like, all right, like this is like, this can't happen again. <laughs> um, so we'd been, we've had, we'd had some big battles, uh, from the time we got together. Uh, but we both knew that we were, I mean, for the first time I told her, I, I met her, I was like, I'm going to, and we just had that connection. It was so, so amazing. Yeah. But we were both going through our own healing journeys. We were battling our own demons and then like, you know, trying to, you know, come together. Come together. Yeah as a couple as well. So, but we had this one, like we had this huge argument and she went off and she did a Reiki course. And then when she came back, she was like, I think you need to do this. So she was friends with, uh, so somebody who introduced me to a guy who does, who does this muscle test. Mm-hmm. And he, he and I worked together in one session and the first session, just the walls came down. Wow. Like I, Touched a part of my soul and unlocked the unlocked emotions that had been keeping me closed off to mm-hmm. so much. That wall fell, and man, it was like a dam breaking. Like I cried for days, wow. and then once that process, once we went, we kept going through that process. Uh, I, I mean, I cried for for months afterwards, wow. and I I took that deeper. I took what he had taught me. And I put it together and yeah, and that's, that's what is, uh, now I'm a, like when I was going through, I was going through this stuff, like about probably about three quarters of the way through working with this guy. I was, I was like, man, I wonder, I wonder if I can drink mm-hmm. again. It's like, cause I'm pretty sure like this, the abuse, the self sabotage that I created, uh, was all like we were talking about earlier about being creators. Like I yeah, created yeah. that. I created the, those, you know, that drinking. I created the, the financial problems. I created the, the love problems. I created, like, my life, the way it was, was a creation mm-hmm. of me or by yeah. me. And so I was like, I, I bet I can. But I was not, I hadn't, I hadn't been drinking for probably five years at the time. I was like, I, was, I wasn't in any rush. I, was, I wasn't trying to prove anything. I was just mm-hmm. curious. And I, I think you know me by, uh, know me well enough now having heard you know what uh, i've already yeah. told you that um you know i like to i kind of push yeah. limits <laughs> and so a few months later i was like i'm gonna do it i'm gonna have a drink and i mm-hmm. did um a few weeks later i had a few more drinks and then a few few weeks later i had a few more drinks and then i i've i told myself i was like that's that that voice you know that that mm-hmm. monster that that you tried to get away from is is waking yeah. up and so I realized that the work had not been yeah. finished. And that's when I just went deep. And I went deep with this work. And uh, I realized that we, the emotions that we embody, they are attached to our emotional body. Oh, yeah. They're also attached to our energetic mm-hmm. body. They're also attached to our physical body. And I went through each, all three of these and started eradicating the emotions that I found on each level. And Aside from my relationship with my wife, the most, pr- the thing that I'm most proud of is the fact that now, and I'm in such a healthy state now that it doesn't cross my mind. Uh, I'm never, you know, I'm never sitting around, man, what should I do? but there are instances like if I'm working out in the garden, it happened like six months ago. I was working out in the garden, I was sweating my butt off. And I came back in or I sat on the porch with a beautiful house on the mountain. Of the and I was just sitting on the porch and I was tired and I was been sweating. I looked at my wife and I said, you know what? I want a beer. Mm-hmm. 
I got on the uh, got on the motorcycle, rode down to the store, grabbed a beer, came back up, and I sat on the porch and I had mm-hmm. one beer. And that is uh, that is my choice yeah. now. I'm I'm afforded the choice of having a yeah. beer if I want, or a yeah. drink if I want. Power of choice, man, and and that's that's I the journey it. that we be, you know, in our conversation as we're talking that we hope that people get is that when because I was I was one of those crazies that said. I'm going to be the best partier you ever saw and all that kind of thing. So <laughs> I know what you're talking about. And um, uh, I went and I pushed the limits. And uh, uh, But we were doing, I know for me, I was doing it on this kind of like a automatic without even really thinking, but I was thinking, but it's more automatic. And when I began to move through my journey, I realized that I had choices. I could say, I don't want to do that. Before the thought came or whatever, I was like, I, I didn't, I just went straight for it. I didn't, there was no guardrails, uh, no guard in my thought life. But once I began to, to um, pursue personal growth and learning about who I am and why I, 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 I was the way I was, I walked into a place of choice and it is the most beautiful place and space to live. Like you said, I can have a bear and you know how to drink a bear shut it off and there's no um, that demand that comes back into your thought again hey you know you could get another you know if it does you could say no yeah i could but i don't want to do i want to i want to do this and so that's a powerful space man and it is my hope though that people get there that's what life is about and that's what we're trying to get them to be in a space choices versus just drifting mm-hmm. along um as uh, we did you know it must be the ball head man it must be the ball head that makes us uh off the chain where we kind of lose our mind <laughs> so um i want you to talk to them well that uh, here you are you had this opportunity you have created this system as you began to look deeper within yourself because i think the system that we all have is within us uh, those programs and those books and all those things are sitting there. And when you sit in front of you, when a client comes in front of you, the reason why uh, they are there is because they haven't stopped to ask the questions. And when they present to you, that's what you do because you know the type of questions to ask and stuff like that. Talk to me, Bo, when about when someone does sit in front of you and you begin to um, uh, move them through their decision process, learning how to identify their yes and their no's. And talk to me, Bo, about when they get it, man. When when that uh, client's eyes just popped open and uh, there's this joy that it sits inside of you that is greater than what they just experienced. Talk to me about that, man. That's uh, truly awesome. Do you know, the, the thing that I really, the, this work, I love the most about this work is that I see myself as, and I am, that's not just how I see myself as I am a guy. Yeah. I've been through yeah. this journey. I've been on both. Like I've, I nearly killed myself yeah. twice. Um, and you know, I've been there. I've seen it all. And when, so, so I'm guiding them through this process yeah. now when I, when, but they are doing yeah. all the work. Mm-hmm. So when I work with somebody, I use muscle testing. I muscle test for mm-hmm. them and we find the emotions that they program. Yeah. But using the meridian release points, which are release points that are uh, 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 around the, the body that correspond to the meridians and the organs and the emotions that are connected to all of those, along with the ammo mm-hmm. breath, um, that they, like they're doing yeah. the work. So they are actually like, and they're connecting with these emotions as we're finding them. Um, not only on a physical level, but also like visualizing, visualizing where they feel yeah. them, right? And then we're also, I'm telling them like, this is where, this is where it is. And then the connecting as well. And so it's really empowering because they are realizing that, you know, the biggest travesty over the last, I don't know how long it's been, but I'd say at least the last hundred years is that we, we have had our, our healing ability hijacked. Yep. Now, let me preface this by saying I would not be here if it was not here for modern medicine and the pharmaceutical industry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Saved my life multiple times. Now, but 
the thing is, the way the process works, like if, you know, nowadays, if somebody even just gets the least bit sick, they go to a doctor. And when they go to that doctor, that doctor gives them a, they have to get a permission mm-hmm. slip from the doctor to go to another doctor <laughs> who gives them the, the, the ingredient that's supposed to make them yeah. better, right? So we have, we have outsourced our healing to, to appeal to a injection, to a syrup or whatever the, you know, magic elixir that comes in, whatever form it yeah. comes. When they realize, when they're going through this process and they're finding these emotions, then they're releasing and they realize and that light goes off and they're like, Oh yeah. my God, this emotion that corresponds to that I attach to this situation at this age, like we find mm-hmm. all of that. We find the emotion, we find the age, we find the situation that it happened. And they, when they connect with it, it's just like laughter. It's crying. It's like, uh, you know, eyes wide open. Like, Oh my God, it's, it's just light bulbs going off. And, uh, like thought bubbles, just like yeah, just, yeah. just popping and awareness. That's that's when the realizations hits that uh, wow, I've created this life that I'm living, and now I'm empowering myself to make the yeah. changes. There's um there's a degree of um, what I've seen over the years in my life since we are emotional beings and we hold that emotion that once you and your technique is to identify that emotion within the body and then to release it. Um, that that uh, emotion um, unchecked will cause sicknesses and disease within the body as well as with deeper than that. But it manifests in all kinds of forms. Oh, hell yeah, it does. And so Definitely. when that release starts to happen, that's where they get their, um, not maintaining their, their, their disease, that's where they get their healing. Bo, um, uh, pharmaceutical can, 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 um, you know, can heal them, their body to repair their body, but it's it's just chemicals to help repair the body and stuff like that. But I'm talking about healing and healing, man, is this internal spiritual mm. thing that is deeper than what they mm-hmm. can do then to the physical body. They can repair that and the body repairs itself as well mm. and they can assist that. But the healing part is when you identify those emotional disturbance within that individual and you begin to pinpoint it and release it. Uh, through laughter and tears and all the other things that that um, situation that traumatized them or they got hurt from, they're absolutely 100% healed from it. And it no longer is a barrier Sorry. within that uh, that human spirit. And they're able to word that to me, man, is what you call healing. Um, and that's that's a totally so different true. And where you're taking them. Um, well, I want to thank you, man, for coming by, Threads of Enlightenment. This has been absolutely beautiful. People, you guys that are listening to Bo and I, you've got to get in touch with him because I know what he's talking about. I, I actually got a chance to experience exactly what he's talking about with my son, uh, with a chiropractor, that my son was suffering from seizures and a chiropractor used that type of um, uh, 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 technique to heal my son through me. So I know what he's talking about. And so um, I... I I just want to tell you guys, get to him because it worked for me. My son is now, he was this little premature baby that almost died. And now he's six feet and change, um, grown man, uh, taller than all of his brothers. So, um, get in touch with Bo That's awesome. That's and awesome. have him walk you guys through so that you can get your healing. As you heard what I described, your healing comes from the inside. And um, uh, Bo has the tools to go ahead and do that. Bo, again, I want to thank you, man, for coming by. Threads of enlightenment, sir. Thank you so much, Ken. All right, man.